Hello and welcome to the PhD virtual video series. In this video I'm going to be going through the new recovery time actual tool. This tool has been designed to allow you to assess your working environment or a customer's working environment to work out what the recovery times would be in the event of a disaster for the applications. So the requirements for running this tool are actually very, very simple. There's no install needed. All you need is somewhere to run the executable, so a Windows-based desktop, uh, workstation, server, doesn't matter. It's going to need network access to the vCenter. It also needs to have an administrator's account because of some of the things we're going to do with the VM, so the cloning, etc., that will be described in the next section. You're also going to need enough space to bring up a copy of these virtual machines. Because obviously, to work out what the recovery time is going to be, we're going to need to start these VMs. So they've got to be spun up so that we know a domain controller might, make 10, might need 10 minutes to start. A database might take another five, etc. So the process that it's going to go through, so once you've installed sorry, once you've downloaded and extracted the executable and you run it, you add your virtual machine. So when this runs, it's going to create a linked clone. That means that we don't have to take up an excessive amount of disk space. We haven't got to make a full copy of a VM. So this is very, very quick and easy to use with minimal impact. It's going to disconnect the network from that virtual machine. Now, this is the linked clone, not the original one. So that obviously as that machine comes up, it has no effect on the production environments. It will start the virtual machine or multiple virtual machines in the right boot group orders. And I'll explain those as we look at the product. Then it's going to delete the linked clones. So it, it gets rid of all that data after it's done all the tests. And then if you've got multiple VMs in there, it's going to do the same thing for all of those. So it's a very, very quick and easy process. So what we'll do now is we'll have a look at the actual product itself. So what I have here is my box standard Windows desktop. I mean, this is a Windows 8.1 desktop. It could be 7, it could be on your server, wherever it is. I've downloaded my executable, so, well, a zip file, and extracted that to a folder which I've got sat on my desktop here. So, as you can see, I've got the PhdRTA calculator.exe. Now, if I run this, the product starts. So, I'll just log in. So, this is going to need to connect to the vCenter to extract all the information out about the virtual machines, but also to be able to create these linked clones and work with it from there. So now I've logged in, this is the tool. It's a very simple product, really. Um, you've got a series of links across the top. You've got the ability to add your virtual machines, to run the tests, and also to adjust the boot orders. And that will become more explanatory as we look at the VMs themselves. And, of course, it tells you down the bottom what your recovery time actual is. So the first step is to add your virtual machines. Now, because we've already given this access to vCenter, I just go through and choose the virtual machines I want as part of this test. So I've chosen a domain controller, a database, a VPN server, and another test server. So most of these machines are Windows. This VPN server is actually a Linux box. And as you can see, some of these it identifies already as Linux machines. When you choose OK, it puts them into your tool, as you would expect. But if I ran this now, all four of these machines would start together. And I don't want that, because I want my domain controller normally to be up and running before I start everything else. So this is the boot order, or the boot groups. So I'll leave my domain controller as one. And I'm going to make this database number two. So I just use my arrows. So you've got increase and decrease. And I want my VPN box actually to be number three. And my RTA test can be number three as well. So what's going to happen here? When I run these, my domain controller is going to be started and tested. Then that's going to be shut down. Then 
this database is going to be started and tested and shut down, so minimizing the amount of resources. But then because I've got these two in this boot group, these are going to come up together, and we're going to see that as this runs through. So what I'll do now is I'll just start the run RTA check. As you can see, it's now starting the snapshots. So if I open up my vCenter, So now I'm into my vCenter. As you can see here, I've got a dc1.phd.rta. So my recovery tool actual. If I right click on this and do edit settings, what you'll see when we come into the network adapter is that the networking is disconnected. As I say, so it has no effect on your production environments. So as this DC1 comes up, it doesn't affect the production machine. So as you can see here now, just by switching back to the calculator, this is in the process of running, and your recovery time actual is at the bottom. So I'm going to leave this to run, and we'll come back as it moves on to the next step. As you can see now, it's moved on to the next section. So you've got it running through its reconfiguring network, starting the VMs. It's all reported down the bottom. So the clone virtual machine, the reconfigure, that original DC1 has disappeared. And now, as you can see here, so if I just move this across, you've got the database 2 PhD RTA. So because it's in separate boot groups, it's got rid of that DC1. So it's now moved on to the next one. So we're not tying up all those resources. So again, we'll let this complete and come back to it once we run into the next boot order, which is the two of them. So that will show you that, which will be the last step then. Now, as you can see, we've moved on to the next group. So this is your two machines together. And as you can see, we've actually got a dev VPM, VPM1 PhD RTA and an RTA test one as well. So obviously if you have more machines in those groups, so if you've got five or six virtual machines in there, you've got to be aware you need the, the amount of resources to allow those all to start together. So you just need to be aware of that. And obviously the clock's ticking along as we run through all of these sequences to give you a final count at the end of this is how long it would take for this application to start up. So now, as you can see, all the tests have completed. So all four machines all booted up, been tested. And as you can see from the calculator time at the bottom, that was done within 9 minutes, 19 seconds. So we know that those machines, when they're spun up in that sequence, will take that amount of time. Now, none of these machines have had their applications tested. This is literally just coming up to VMware tools. So this is what a lot of our competitors will do out of the box. Um, as this is a free tool, it doesn't test your applications. So if you decided, yes, this is something that we want to do and we want to know about this in greater depth, then what you would need to do is go out and purchase a product like Reliable DR. So this will automate and run these tests on whatever sequence time you wanted, but then allow you to fail over and fail back, but also to be able to test your applications, not just the virtual machines. So whether that's checking services, whether it's checking um, things like SQL databases or Exchange, that's all built into the product out of the box. So hopefully that gives you a better idea of what this RTA calculator will do for you. So if you decide that you want to proceed any further with anything else and you want to download either our backup products or Reliable DR, you can go and get a fully functioning trial version from PhD Virtual's website. Okay, thank you very much, and I'll speak to you in another video.